Hey guys, it's Monica at Academic Phoenix Plus and welcome to another ZBrush tutorial. But this time we are going to take our model that we created in the le in the previous tutorial, which is this female armor piece. And we are going to low res it, UV map it and bring it into Substance Painter for the final textures. If you are new to this channel, I post 3D tutorials on a weekly basis. Tutorials include Maya, ZBrush and Substance Painter. If that is your sort of thing, please consider subscribing. So bring out your creativity, open up your software, and let's get started in how to low res this model so that we can use it in, let's say, a game engine or in your animation, whatever software you would like to use this on. So as I mentioned previously, there are several reasons why we use ZBrush. You can either create a 3D model in ZBrush and then we have to low res it so that we can bake it, or we can create it in a different software like Maya, bring it to ZBrush just to detail it, and then we can basically bake it as well. So it's a two prong process. And you can see a previous tutorial where I bring in an ax and detail it and bake it. And in this case, I built the model in ZBrush and I'm going to go ahead and bake it. So the first thing we need to do is clean this up. So I have this lady here that I use as reference and so let's delete her. And then I'm going to merge these two together because right now they're separate. So I'm gonna go ahead and in my sub tool, I'm gonna to merge down, click okay. And my total points, which is basically poly count, is 4.2 million. So it's very, very, very high. So this is gonna be my high poly object. That means that this is where all the detail is gonna be coming from. Now, it doesn't make sense, unless you're using, I guess, Unreal 5 and you have a killer machine, uh, it doesn't make sense to have such a high poly object for something so small as a, just armor. So we wanna go ahead and export this so that we can use it to get the details. So up here at the top in ZBrush, we're going to go to export and I'm gonna call this my HP female armor. So that means high poly and it's thinking up at the top. You can see up the top, it's actually doing its OBJ and it's thinking really hard because it is a lot of polygons. And I can tell it's done when that little bar is, that orange bar goes all the way to the right. It's almost done. Ah, there it goes. So it's up here. Um, so now I have a high poly object that I can use for baking. Next, we want to low res this. So lucky for us, ZBrush has a remesher. Now I am using ZBrush 2022. This also works in ZBrush Core. So down here at the bottom, I'm going to collapse the sub tool. Let's open up geometry. And we have this thing called Z remesher. So if I click on Z remesher, what it's going to do, it's going to, and again, it's going to have a bar up here at the top. It's going to try to lower res this object as much as possible. So it's actually going to merge them together to make them into one piece or as best as it can. And then it's going to try to get as much of the information as it can from the high poly and put it as, as a low poly as possible. So right now, as I mentioned before, our high po our active points are 4.2 million. So, and ZBrush is actually really good at lowering it. And now it's at 18,000, which is actually really good. Now let me change my material because I think it's a little distracting. And now you can see the difference. Now I can go a little lower. So let's click on zebra measure again. And now it's down to 14. So that's another 4,000 that I saved. If you want, you can kind of tweak it a little bit. I'm not a big fan of that little pucker right there, but in general, and I'm not really paying attention too much about what's going on in inside. I'm just kind of focusing mostly on the outside. But again, this is actually fairly low. It can go lower still, like can bring it into my end, go even further. But for the purpose of this exercise, we're gonna move on. But it's amazing, it went from 4 million to 14. And it's amazing. <laughs> It's amazing. All right, so next is UV mapping. Now I am using ZBrush 2022, as I mentioned, and ZBrush does have a plugin called UV Master. And what I can do is just click unwrap and it will do its best to unwrap my, my model. You can see that it added these seams, which I have active. So I have here check seams. Um, and if you wanna see what it looks like, you click on flatten. You know, ZBrush does the best that it can and I'm gonna click on unflatten and again, the point of this exercise is to basically show you guys how what the pipeline is. I'm not really here to show you how to make it look perfect for industry standards. It's more like a, the theory. I'm going to be showing you guys how it works so that you guys can spend the time UV mapping it properly and, all, and so on and so forth. Now, unfortunately, in ZBrush Core, it does not have UV mapping. So my recommendation would be to uh, export this slow poly into Maya or whatever program you want and and unwrap it there. 
But for now, in this case, we have a low poly object and it is UV mapped. So let's move on. Let's go to export. I'm going to call this LP for low poly. And now I am ready to go into Substance Painter. All right, Substance Painter, let's go ahead and go up here to the top. We're going to go to New. Uh, PBR is fine. Let's select. And I'm going to select my Low Poly. So this is where all the cool information is going to end up on. Let me change this to 2048 because I want a higher document resolution and then click OK. All right, hit F to focus, F to focus. And we now have our object that is UV mapped and it's basically ready to be textured. But before we do that, we want to bake our stuff. So anytime you import a model, you want to bake it. So let's go to texture set settings. We're going to scroll down to bake mesh maps. And I'm going to go to a 2048 map, which is 2K and increase my dilation width. And this is in the high definition meshes. This is where we add our high poly model. So let's click on this. I'm going to grab my HP, which is high poly. And that's basically one of the, that's basically where we're going to get our normal maps and also all the details. Let's go through and we don't really have ID, so we can turn that off and be an occlusion. We can go ahead and change that to secondary rays. And I always, I usually choose ignore backface always. Let's go to curvature and increase it. Let's go to position. Looks good. Thickness. Go ahead and increase that as well. So I increase those just because I want to get the best bake that I can. Let's go ahead and click on bake. And now it's going to do its magic. Now the normal is going to take the longest because we are bringing in a four point million polygon object and there's a lot of details. Right now our, our object's actually pretty flat, but you can see up there, this, you can see now that it's getting all the details. Actually, that wasn't that long. Uh, now it's working on occlusion, which again, it's got some really nice details in there. So it's going to try to see uh, you know, which one's rising and falling and then making a map out of it. So you can see that it's already getting those nice subtle occlusion. So pretty and fast. We made this armor how long? Super fast. Oh, you can see that there's an edge here. That might cause us a problem. That's a seam issue. That's why you don't want to put your seam at the front of your object. Ooh, now it's working on curvature. Look how nice that looks. Very cool. It's got really nice details. Again, your curvature is the edges of your anything that's rising and falling. That's position, that's thickness. So it's trying to figure out what it's basic, almost like cavity. It's trying to figure out what's deep, what's out, things like that. So each of them can drive a texture, which is the whole point of, of baking. Almost done. It's almost done with thickness. Some areas are thicker than others. And voila, we have our, look, it looks almost exactly like our high poly. It's crazy. But remember, it's still all very low poly. Nice. Look at that. And only that, that seam that we had an issue with doesn't, it, there's really no issue there. So Substance Painter did a fantastic job. Beautiful. All right. Uh, let's texture. Let's going to go to layers. Um, we're going to do something similar. I'm going to choose, uh, let's choose gold. And you can just drag it in here. There it goes. And we can add a black mask. And then we can paint or we what we want. So for example, up here, we had some gold. For the sake of this exercise, I am going to go fairly quickly. So just uh, bear with me. If this was a profession, like I was going to add this into my portfolio, I would definitely take the time to make this as beautiful as possible. So please take your time. If this is going to go into your portfolio, don't be as messy as what I'm doing. Uh, this is more of an example of how it works more than anything else. If you click on the letter X, it will change it to the color white, which means it will mask or black and it will mask it back so we don't see it. So I can get a little bit of cleaner lines here. Oops, X again. And just kind of get rid of those gold edges. And remember, you can also paint here. So if you want to paint on the UVs itself, you can, if you feel like that's going to be faster. All right, let's grab some silver or maybe chrome. And this one I'm going to drag below it, right? And it's super reflective. So let's take a look at some of the material properties. 
So let's scroll down here and I'm going to roughen it up a little bit. And let's play around. Metallicness is okay. Uh, it's pretty shiny. You can also reduce the, uh, change the color if you want to. So maybe you want to go a darker color. Uh, that being said, let me grab this one. I'm actually going to make this one darker. It's kind of neat looking. Uh, let's make it a little rougher, something like that. I'm going to add a black mask on this one, and then I can paint in the sleeves. White means you can see it. Black means you can't. And I'm clicking the letter X on my keyboard to kind of switch back and forth. So this is right now white. And if you want to, you can see it down here at the bottom. You see it here. If I click X, it goes to black and white. X, 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 X this is a fast way to paint. If I want to go a little faster, we can. Over here to the left, we have something called polygon fill. And I can grab this one, which is the geometry, and then I can drag it. All right. So what it does is that it selects that polygon. And, and because they're separated, they're actually not merged together. Uh, they're not physically attached with vertices, therefore I can make that make that selection really fast. Um, I can do the same thing by clicking X, changing this to black and selecting this polygon, which will make it disappear. So if I go back to the gold, I can actually tell it to for the gold to go away. Just fast. So Substance Painter, there's a reason why it's like <laughs> number one. People use it like crazy. Let's make it a little rougher. And you know, because we're in Substance Painter, I mean, we can always add even more. So if you wanted to, you can add a little bit of gold into these details. I was doing research on armor and how all this stuff works. And it turns out that uh, embedding real gold into armor was extremely toxic. They had to use uh, the blacksmith, had to use lead. Oh no, mercury, I think it was mercury. Um, and the way it worked is that they put the gold and mercury together and then they would evaporate the substance and the mercury would turn into vapor and disappear, but the gold would stay behind on the armor. But as you can imagine, and this was very expensive. So these guys were, this blacksmith were like well off, but the problem is, is that they died because they died early because of all the toxic, because they were breathing all this, uh, all this toxic vapor. So, ugh. So it's pretty, but at what cost? Now we can just use Substance Painter to make it pretty without, you know, breathing in toxic vapor. Uh, let me just get some of these details. Make it small and just kind of, again, it's really rough. I'm hoping you guys are getting the idea behind it, but you can see that very quickly we can get these really nice results. Okay, I'm just gonna kind of quickly do the tiger or the lion. Lion, I know what it is, it's a lion. <laughs> All right, and now we have a cool looking armor. All right, when you're ready, you go to File, Export Textures. <coughs> you want to tell it where to go. So I'm gonna just choose here. Right now we're using PBR uh, Roughness, but if you're using Maya like I am, you can always choose the Arnold AI Standard Surface. Let's go over here and 2048. This is what it's going to be called. If you go to output templates and you go to AI, this is the Arnold standard surface. It's going to be called mesh texture. It's a, it's a whole word, right? So if you go to list to exports, it's going to call it LP female armor, uh, default. It's, it's a long name. So if you want to change it, you can create a, a different one. So for example, I made an AI standard surface that has opacity and occlusion and it's only called texture set base color so if i go back to my list exports oh, let me go back here go back up to the top and choose let's say opacity it's now just called default matte which doesn't make any sense so let me change this one to female armor then go back to file export textures and then you got to do this all over again uh let's see opacity you can go back here and you can see that it's called female armor base color. Now it's got all of these other things, which I don't need. So let's go here. And I definitely need base color, metalness, roughness, and normal. Don't really need opacity. I don't have anything that's glowing and occlusion's fun. We can keep it, but it's not really necessary. And then export. All right, we now have our textures, which looks like this. 
right? It's beautiful. Actually, this does, and this is the occlusion. Let me jump into Maya. Let's import our low poly model. There it is. You know, I could definitely reduce it. And we can see that it's got its UVs. I already have a substance painter tag. Um, I have a video tutorial on how to do this, but uh, you just click on this object. You tell it that it's an Arnold, select multiple maps, and I'm going to select all my maps, including occlusion, click select, and then uh, double check. You can see that metallic and occlusion don't, for whatever reason, don't get accepted. So let's just grab it and really easy fix. Let's go ahead and grab occlusion. I don't have height, I don't have emission, and apply. Doesn't look like anything happened, but let's go ahead and go to assign existing material, and you can see that we now have an AI standard surface. Press the number six. Let's add in a light. And there it is. You can see that um, there's a little bit of geom. You can kind of see the geometry. And unfortunately, the preview is not very pretty. But uh, let me show lights. Yeah, too bad. So let's take this. And what we're going to do is go to Mesh Display. And we're going to unlock the normals. And then we're going to soften. There it is. Pretty amazing results. Let me get a better angle here. Let me get this here. And I always like to increase my, increase my intensity of my light because I feel like it's kind of dark. And by the way, I'm rendering in Maya 2022. Let me make it bigger. Let's go to my render settings, scroll down. Let's go to, didn't do all this effort. Let's render it larger. So the fun thing is, is that this is a 3D model that looks like it's 4 million polygons, but it's not. It's only, what was it, 13,000? 14,000 polygons. So, and I can actually reduce it even further. If I went through Maya and just kind of removed edges and things like that, I could probably go way less um, and reduce the polygon count. The big thing is that your low poly has to be UV mapped so that it can bake properly. And that's basically the pipeline. You model it in ZBrush, you can low res it in ZBrush, you can even UV map it in ZBrush. You're not stuck there. You can always bring that high poly into Maya and reduce it. I have a video tutorial on how to do that called retopologizing, which gives you way more control over your poly count and also how you want the polygons to lay flat. And once you do that, then you bring it to Substance Painter to bake. And then you get all your textures ready and you bring it into whatever engine you want. You can use this in 3ds Max, you can use this in Maya, you can use it in Unreal, you can use it in Unity. It's basically how the industry works. So hopefully you guys found that helpful. Let me know by leaving a comment below. I love this stuff. I think it's really cool. It's pretty amazing what you can do. If you like this content and you want to see more, please like and subscribe. That is your message to me, letting me know that you guys like this stuff and that you want to see more. Take a look at academicphoenixplus.com. There you can find, find free 3D models, reference images, and so much more. If you want to support me a little bit more, please take a look at my e-courses. I show you a deep dive into Maya, including how to model, how to texture, and how to UV map, plus more. So if you can, please purchase an e-course. Uh, that would be amazing. That, that would really be great. Again, thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. Keep creating and I will see you next time.